Hi there, welcome to BI Consulting Pro and my name is Ajay Kumar. Recently, I was receiving a lot of questions on Microsoft Fabric Coast or Microsoft Fabric Copilot Coast. How much it's going to cost us? Or what are the different ways that we can calculate the cost for Microsoft Fabric or Microsoft Fabric Copilot? Well, if you are also the one who's looking to answer these questions or who's wondering that how it's going to happen, then this video is for you. If you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. If you are all here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay up to date with our latest videos and contents. Now, without any further ado, let's head over to my laptop. First of all, Microsoft Fabric Coast has been divided into two different parts. Whether you can pay, pay as you go, or you can also reserve it. And what does it mean by reservation? Well, you have to reserve Microsoft Fabric for one year or more, and then you are going to get discount. And in this case, discount can be up to 40%. Yes, if you are going to reserve Microsoft Fabric licenses with your organization, then you can get a lot of discounts. So please pay attention to that. Otherwise, you can just go pay as you go and you don't need to really worry about that but it's going to be more expensive to you now there's another question that what are the different benefits of microsoft fabric capacity well first of all you should remember that microsoft fabric capacities are based on fsqs and power BI premium capacity is based on psqs however it's going to change probably from the june onwards june 2024 i have already created one video on microsoft fabric course if you haven't watched that video then you can also watch that video i'm going to provide a link in the description section so please don't forget to check it out now, as you know that Microsoft Fabric has different experiences. So if one organization decided to go for Microsoft Fabric for their end-to-end -end data analytics solutions, then they are going to get advantage of several other experiences. For example, you can take advantage of not just Power BI, you can also create your own data warehouse, you can create notebooks, you can create data science related your own different artifacts over there, you can create your own lake house and so much more. So there are tons of other advantages are over there. That's why Microsoft Fabric is going to be a bit more expensive as compared to Power BI. And also in the last seven years, Microsoft hasn't increased any price for the Power BI premium capacities. And this is also one of the reasons that now since they have provided so many different experiences, end-to-end -end data analytics, software as a service platform, etc. So they are going to increase the cost over there. So don't worry about that. But still, if you are going to reserve it, then you can take advantage of the discount provided by Microsoft. Now, as you can see on your screen, you can see if you are going to go with pay as you go, how much you need to pay. However, if you are also going to go monthly cost, then there is another cost factor over there and you are, going to, you are going to save some cost over there. It totally depends on your workload that how much workloads you are going to put over there. If you are just going to put less load, then of course you can go pay as you go. But again, I advise you to think about the perspective of using Microsoft Fabric Platform for a longer duration and in that case, you may want to go for the reservations. You can contact to the Microsoft directly that how much you can save it and what kind of uh, deal you can break with them. Probably you, this is going to save a lot of money for you. And why I'm saying so? Because Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end data analytics platform over there. You can have your data science experience, ML experience, real-time analytics experience and so much more, not just Power BI. That's why I'm saying that it is going to be a bit more expensive as compared to others but also if you will see that over here you are going to get your one leg storage over there then additionally you can create any other solution on the top of that so you don't need to buy databricks license you don't need to buy azure licenses for example data factory etc so everything you are going to get in one package and that's the reason it looks a bit more expensive however last decision is up to you or your organization that how you are going to accommodate into the architecture of your own organization now let's talk about the one leg storage. So one leg storage is basically your Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which is gonna give you all the benefits where you can store your all of the data. Whenever we talk about Microsoft Fabric, then there is a license that you're gonna need for the capacities where all the computer is gonna happen. But apart from that, there's some networking cost, there's some cost for mirroring of the databases, or maybe there's a cost of storage. So one leg is the part where you have to pay storage cost as well but this cost is not really a lot that you need to worry about it's very cheap if you will ask me personally and if you are not going to have your separate data lake or something then you can go for microsoft fabric which is going to help you to bring all the solutions together on a very single platform where your data scientist bi developer data analyst machine learning engineer ai engineer etc everyone can work together on the same platform 
So that's why you have to pay storage cost over there. Apart from that, you have to also think about the mirroring cost of your databases. If you are going to mirror Snowflake, Databricks or some other database over there, then you have to pay cost for that. But generally it's free up to two times. Apart from that, you may need to pay some extra cost over there. Now we talk about the networking cost. So networking cost has not been revealed yet, but in the future it's soon going to come over there. Of course, we do pay if we are using the Azure services as well. There also we are paying some networking cost and that same applies over here. If you will think overall, then you think about a system that you have designed previously where you have, for example, your data lake house on Azure Databricks, where you are paying cost for Databricks a lot of there, even whenever you are provisioning any new services or solution there, then you are paying cost for, let's say, Synapse Analytics or Data Factory, etc. And then you are paying for the Power BI as well. Over here, you are getting everything at one place. That's why it may appear that you are paying a lot of cost, but if you will see on a longer duration, you are not really paying a lot of cost over there. If your organization doesn't have already your lake house, etc., then this would be much cheaper option for you. But still, you have to figure it out with your data solution architects, how and what you have to provision and how it can be beneficial for your own organization. Now, moving forward, let's see how the fabric cost has been calculated. Fabric cost is basically based on the CU, so you get certain CUs and it is per second. In my example, you can see that each CU is equivalent to total amount of seconds in an hour. So in an hour, there are 3600 seconds. If I'm going to take an example of F64 capacity unit, then there it is equivalent to P1, Power B Premium. And over here, we get 64 CUs. So 64 CUs are going to be equivalent to 64 multiplied by 3600. It's going to come out 230,400 CUs per hour. So this is what you are going to get. And now let's suppose you have a report over here. I'm just taking an example of one of the report, which is known as demand outlook consistency report, which is consuming this much of CU seconds, which you can see on your screen. And it is for only 90 users per day. Now you can just see that F64 is going to cost you around 11.52 USD per hour. And this is based on pay as you go. But if you're going to go for reservation and others, it's going to be much cheaper over there. After doing all these calculations, which you can see on your screen, please do let me know, comment in the comment section if you are not understanding these calculations, then you would get to know that you are paying about 50 bucks per day. So please have a look at these calculations, which are going to help you. Now we are going to talk about Microsoft Copilot cost. First of all, before going into the cost calculations, which you can see right now on your screen, you should know that Copilot is based on the open AI solution. And there it works based on tokens. So there are some tokens when you do your input, those are going to get consumed. And when you are going to get output as well, then some of the tokens are going to consumed over there. You can see on the very first snapshot over here that how much it's going to cost. This means how much CUs it's going to cost you. Now, if you are going to go through this calculation and on the top, you can also read it that approximately 1000 tokens are about. And also you can see on the top right hand side corner that 1000 tokens are about 750 words over there. So if you are going to calculate the cost for 30 users, so 30 users can send around 4, 4.2 or something. So if you would go through this calculation, you are going to find that these 30 users can just send four and a half requests. But ideally, this doesn't work like that. This is just like my example that I took it. I did calculations. I assume that these are number of my users and this is number of CUs are going to get consumed. And this is my capacity over there. But if you will ask me when you have to really do, you have to first think about that Copilot can be enabled on Power BI premium capacities as well as on fabric capacity. That means fabric capacities. That means PSQs and FSQs. Now, if you are already using Power BI premium, then you really don't need to convert your PSQs into FSQs. You can work with your PSQs. Here also one very important point that you should remember that if your organization has an enterprise contract with Microsoft, which is going to get, let's suppose, end in 2027, then you don't need to worry about converting PSQs to FSQs. You can still use PSQs till your enterprise contract is going to get end. But once it's, it's going to end, after that you have to convert into FSQs and then there you have to limit your fabric items that someone can create. You have to limit them to Power BI only if you just want to use the Power BI experience. If you don't want to use the Power BI experience, if you want to use more than Power BI experience, like suppose Data Factory or Data Warehouse, Notebook, etc., then you have to see because that's also going to increase the cost. And Copilot basically going to consume the same capacity where you are going to enable it. For example, I have one PSQs and on my PSQs, I have P2 capacity, which is equivalent to 16 vCores. And if I'm going to use this 16 vCores and over there, 
you just assume that already my reports are running over there and these reports are consuming 80 percent of the capacity and if i'm going to enable the copilot copilot is also going to consume the capacity over there and that's how it is going to consume the overall and that's how you would see the total consumption over there however there is a way to find out how much copilot is going to consume and how much reports are consuming over there so your power bi global admin or your solution architect has to figure it out that how to balance these consumption because copilot definitely gonna increase the burden on your capacity as long as people are going to send requests they will try to use the copilot it is going to consume your capacities as well so please be careful about that now we are going to go further and here is the capacity metric app i have already talked about that several times it is fabric capacity metric app which is going to give you the utilization of your capacities as i just mentioned that if you really want to know how much your copilot is consuming your capacity is over there then you can use it this is one of the examples where you can see on your screen that how much copilot is consuming the cus so cus are in seconds basically whenever you are buying any capacity you get certain cus as i told you in fsqs you get 64 and then uh, these are 64 cus per hour then you have to also multiply by 3600 you get the total cus and you have to see how much you are consuming inside your organization this is the way that you can get to know that how much cost is coming for the copilot don't worry about that that the calculation that i showed you earlier because according to my calculation 30 users even just send around 4 4.5 requests to the copilot in one month in one month they can consume around eight thousand dollars but in practical scenario situations can get changed over there let's suppose you have already the psqs and your capacity utilization is 50 percent then you can enable the copilot over there and then your people can start using it but metrics app but this fabric capacity metrics app is the right solution for you where you can literally see that in practical how much cost is occurring for your copilot now i'm going to take you to certain articles which i'm going to just show you and i'll provide you all the link in the description section that you can check it out yourself what is the cost what is cus what is cu seconds how much fabric cost can occur etc apart from my analysis that i have just shown you over there so you can also read those articles those are very important and there are lots of information that you should note down for example in fabric there is smoothing but you should also remember that if you are over utilizing your capacity after a particular point you have to jump into another capacity or let's say fsqs and then you have to pay the whole cost over there so cost is a very very important factor when it comes to microsoft fabric and you should be very much careful about that now if you will see on my screen the very first article is by former former is by gilbert covavellios so he lives in gold coast australia he's a fantastic person i have worked with him and he's a very good friend of mine too he's a fellow mvp and he does really amazing job in terms of the new technology or whenever the coast is coming out etc so i request you personally over here to subscribe to his blog and there you are going to find a lot tons of information he has created one calculator as well over here you can come and you can see how much cost may occur for you if you are going towards the fabric or you are using the copilot etc another article is over here by endpoint over here in this article you would find that what are certain hidden factors that you should be aware about the microsoft fabric cost then Here's an example by Microsoft that what is the copilot cost, how you are going to calculate it, etc. Then there's an example as well for end to end case that, okay, this is the case, how much I can expect my cost to occur. But personally, I'll recommend you to depend on your fabric capacity metrics app, which is going to give you the right answer that how much cost is occurring for you. And also in Microsoft fabric tenant settings, you can enable copilot only for certain users. You don't need to enable it for the entire organization. And that's literally going to help you. Last but not least, article is by Chris Webb. He's also an amazing guy. I really appreciate his work. And he has written one article over here where you are going to get a lot of answers to your question regarding Microsoft Copilot cost. However, recently I interacted with him and he told me that he's still working on getting some more inputs and more practical examples where he can literally tell us how much it's going to cost if somebody is going to go for copilot in microsoft power bi or microsoft fabric so please stay tuned with all these blogs you can subscribe them and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found that interesting also give us thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video for more content stay tuned with us if you are looking for any of the training programs for microsoft fabric microsoft power bi or any consulting services you can connect with us till then keep enjoying data and explore this world of data i'm gonna see you in the next video